Hey everybody, happy, uh, what's today? Torch Thursday, of course. Uh, duh. So happy Torch Thursday, um, beating dreams stream. We absolutely had a, a random power blip, um, just a minute ago. I, I literally, I started the stream and I was getting ready to, like, push the button. I was like, everything is dark. This is not okay. <laughs> this, this is not the ideal situation. So, so thankfully everything rebooted just fine. Everything's fine. It's all good. Ah. Lori's once again trying to lure Heather away from me. It's working. Stop it. Stop it, Lori. Stop it. But I didn't no. have mashed potatoes. You can't have my Heather. I fed her. Yeah. I, I tried to feed her Chinese food, but unfortunately, I apparently accidentally wrote down the Chinese food that I wanted to eat instead of the Chinese food that she wanted to eat. Uh, so, so that was a thing. But I, I did hopefully compensate her um, sufficiently with mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, just in the grand scheme of things, mashed potatoes make up for a lot. Like, it's there true. are a lot of things that can be fixed. This is my this is my personal philosophy, but I'm pretty sure that it's shared by Carol yep. and Heather. It's that there solid. are a lot of things that can be fixed with mashed potatoes. I'm not talking like structurally. I'm talking emotionally. Just please case, don't fix things. Please, structurally please yeah. With please don't potatoes. like fix your house with mashed potatoes because that's not going to work well. But yeah, as far as comfort food goes, mashed potatoes are definitely up there as a as a pretty magical food. I mean, carbohydrates. Not to use that as a hole in the wall. I mean, no, that's too Only, only if you're just about to move out and you don't have to live with it. Because they use toothpaste. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're just gonna, um, cactus cut potatoes. Oh. Ah. Ah. No. Sorry, Lori broke us. Give a second. Now we're both moving there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now Carol's mad. I can't do this tree. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard was porn. No, 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 no. That's that's saying. different. That's ASOS only fans. Possibly Sigos. <laughs> oh, hey Carol, you're invited. Ah! <laughs> Carol May, that means you're it. Carol May's bringing the porn, though. It, it's your ship. Okay. Where are we sailing? <laughs> You're staying here. The rest of us are sailing to Canada. Oh, okay. There's good food up there on here. Right? Why? What? There... The power cords don't work. Okay. There's a, there's, a, a, okay, I'm going to try not to break everything while no, I No, don't worry about it. I no, just... it's, they're, they're 75% unplugged and that's why they're not working. Ah. So, uh, uh. do they work now? Yes. It's amazing. Oh it works, my gosh. It works better when you plug it in, you know, lessons <laughs> for technology and also for life. So, it is Torch <laughs> Thursday on the Beating Dream stream. That means that this is our project for today. This is our wire filigree pendant. There are so very many, many, many applications for this. Okay, so this is basically, <laughs> clearly, um, <laughs> there are so many ways that could go, but this is not a Saturday night stream, so yeah. I'm not going to go any of those ways. <laughs> I am going to focus on the project. That's a good plan. Everybody laugh at that. <laughs> See, Carol, Carol got the joke. <clears throat> I'm just here for support. But there are so very many well, things that you can do you can do with this technique. So this is basically, hey, let's take some wire, let's make some shapes, and let's solder them together. So this could be um, earrings, it could be a pendant, it could be, you know, you can absolutely, thank you, Aso, uh, you're just saving it for Saturday, I know. Saving up all of the, um, you know. The naughty. <laughs> Carol's singing on stream. I'm going to say with that's a drink. Also, say with that's a drink is totally terrible syntax. But anyway, um, yeah, Aso is, is saving up all of his um, load for Saturday night stream. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was, I, I was trying to find something a little bit more delicate, but my brain is just not there. Also, is I'm still going to be that good. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, also, I do want to say, so I, I revamped a little bit my absinthe necklace. Um, yesterday, and I was very happy with that. I, I made my sugar cubes smaller, so now it will actually fit on my spoon. And yes, I am. <laughs> awesome! So Lori's already made all the instructions for the stream, so I don't really have to do anything. <laughs> but I'm very happy with the revamp of my absinthe necklace because it was really really bothering me that the sugar cube was too big for the spoon because I every once in a while I just get weirdly OCD not not most of the time I mean maybe my staff would definitely take issue with that but but uh, also why aren't you focusing camera I focused you before the stream and then we had a blackout and then we had a blackout but 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 but, but, but nope. We're unfocused. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of how beating dreams functions. But anyway, I just want to show off my my new and small and sugar cube, and then I'll actually start with the the project that I'm supposed to be teaching. Move over. Do, do, do. Focus, focus, focus. That's better. Yay! Am I right? Well, that's how things look when I take my glasses off, too, unless they're, like, this far from my face. But, yeah, so I did, I ensmallened my sugar cube, so now it will, would actually theoretically fit, it, it doesn't reach my spoon, but it would fit on the end of my spoon. And, yes, I realize that the absinthe bottle is ridiculously tiny. That's just because it's really cute. But I'm very, very happy with my newly revamped absinthe necklace and of course we will have our Halloween stream next week where Heather and I will both be in costume. I will be the green fairy, she will be the morgan, we will be having death in the afternoon as our crossover in the cocktail. Evening. Yeah. We will, have, we will be having death in the afternoon in the evening as our crossover cocktail. Also, um, so I decided uh, because Facebook advertising algorithms put it in front of me. So I, I did a trial subscription box to a cocktail subscription service, um, which is called Shaker and Spoon. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we will be getting a Shaker and Spoon cocktail subscription box for November. I will unbox it on the air and that will dictate um, three of the um, four or five, because I actually have no idea how many Saturdays are in November. Cocktails we're gonna do in November, but I'm very excited to try this cocktail subscription service. Uh, so I've heard good things. Yes, Heather's heard good things, and so definitely for um, November. stay tuned for our Shaker and Spoon experience on the Sips Shopping and Shenanigans stream. But at the moment, I should really, uh, well, today I should really moisturize my hands. But anyway, um, uh, now we're going to go ahead and do the Beating Dreams Torch Thursday stream. So let's talk tools and supplies for the wire filigree pendant. All right, supplies um, are pretty simple. You're gonna need some wire. I'm using 14 gauge square wire, but these techniques are applicable across all kinds of wire. You could use round wire. Um, you know, I actually thought about asking for a sponsorship, but I was like, I don't know if our viewership's quite big enough. Yeah, that's true. You know, I'm uh, so if we have a couple of good Good shaker, and I, I'm planning definitely on you know posting on Instagram and doing lots of tagging to see if we can get a sponsored shaker and spoon <laughs> box because I am definitely up for anything that's free cocktails. Yes. Um, so 14 gauge square wire, but again, this technique works across pretty much all of your wires: half round, full round, any gauge of square. Okay, this this is literally just let's make shapes and solder them together. So 14 gauge square. You all know the stream. If you have a drink, that's a drink. Otherwise, just chalk it up to um, add one for Saturday. 14 gauge square is what I'm using today. Um, also, I'm going to dangle one single bead from the bottom. If I have time, that's going to be 
a black spinel, but really it can be anything you want. It's good. We're, you know, we're, we're going into our spoopy week of tutorials. I just finished all of our tutorial um, content for next week, Halloween week. We have a bunch of fun, spooky, and um, Halloween-y themed tutorials for you. I'm so glad Breathe. that my computer did not question the spelling B-I-R-B-S. Okay. Burbs. <laughs> well, I mean, burbs is correct. Totally, <laughs> you know, in the vernacular. Yes. At this point. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, Spoopy Week coming up. It's gonna be really fun, and of course, it'll con it will culminate um, with Heather and I in costume on Saturday night doing uh, Death in the Afternoon and selling beads. So. That was not a yawn. Mm -mm. No. Any resemblance to any yawns, like, I have caffeine. Uh, real or, you know, imagined, imagined is completely coincidental. Drink caffeine, is what Heather's saying. Is that a sign that we need to drink? <laughs> well, I need to drink something that's a stimulant and not a, you know, go to sleep and. Alright, in addition to my 14 gauge square wire, I'm going to need solder. Um, I'm going to need some just easy solder is all I'm going to need for tonight's tutorial because it's all going to be basically done in one soldering pass so I don't need um, to do any different uh, densities of solder and then I do need my bead and then if I'm going to add my bead I'm going to need a little bit of 26 gauge sterling silver wire to add that bead. Now. Um, because it is a soldering tutorial, of course, there is an absolute crap ton of tools that you need if you're a fabricator. Of course, you probably have all these tools. I am ready to hand. You're going to need a torch. I've got my blazer butane, my favoritest favorite torch. I have my torch. I do. Uh, my soldering surface. I'm going to use my solderite board. I like solderite boards personally because they're a little bit neater and cleaner than like a charcoal block and also they're easier to put away as a person who doesn't have a permanent soldering workstation. It's nice to have something that I can, you know, put away and take back out fairly easily. Hand tools, pliers, um, round nose, chain nose, wire cutters, files, um, steel wool, maybe a little bit of sandpaper, probably not, but you never know. Um, flux, we'll talk about what that is and what it does in a little bit. Pickle in the pickle pot, again, we'll talk about what that is and what it does when it's time for us to use it. Sorry for the flux brush. Eee! We get to see tur- Okay, so Lori brings up a good point is tomorrow. Friday is a oh, Zoom- Oh, have the email? No, of course okay. we haven't is a Zoom Crafty Cocktail Hour. That means that you will not find us here on Twitch. You won't find us on Facebook. You're gonna find us all on Zoom, hanging out together, crafting, drinking, chatting, and being just generally ridiculous and possibly seeing Lori's new kitten. So if you have Zoomed with us before, it is gonna be the same meeting info if you have not Zoomed with us before. Feel free to email us, meetingdreamsdallas at gmail.com. We will send you that meeting info. Um, but yeah, that's going to be 6 p.m. tomorrow. Zoom Crafty Cocktail Hour from 6 to 8. It's going to be a really good time. And again, there might be a kitten sighting. Who doesn't want to be on a Zoom with a kitten sighting? I mean, isn't that what this whole pandemic has been? Or what has made this whole pandemic bearable? I was about to say that's what's made this whole pandemic worthwhile. But that was totally wrong. But what's made this pandemic bearable? I don't think that's true. I think it's kitten sightings. That's what's made this pandemic bearable. Alright, so let's talk about making wire filigree. It really is just about like creating shapes and soldering them together. So this particular pendant has um, three basic shapes. It's got this inverted heart shape, it's got the opposing double spiral, and then it's got this kind of crossed bit. <laughs> so I'm going to take my um, 
14 gauge wire and I'm just gonna cut some pieces of it so if I'm gonna I'm gonna make a pendant that is loosely based on this so that means I need a longer piece for the bottom a longer piece for the middle and two shorter pieces for the top that are exactly the same length so I'm gonna do a let's see what am I gonna do I'm gonna do a three inch piece a four inch piece and two two inch pieces and again this is all sterling silver wire so if you're gonna be fabricating meaning soldering you need sterling silver um, 14 karat solid gold brass bronze or copper um, sterling silver being the of, of the readily accessible metals of that list that I just said sterling silver being the least difficult to work with um, brass bronze and copper are are very accessible um, and copper is very easy to work with except for the fact that there's no copper solder brass and bronze are easy to work with except you need super pickle so seriously a sterling silver is one of the easiest and most accessible metals to work with so I've got my four pieces of wire so I'm gonna start with my bottom piece which is gonna be this one here um, so I'm going to find the middle, and I'm going to bend my wire at the middle to make a 90 degree, or not a 90 degree, but a, but a pointy bit. Hey, look at Heather sending the Zoom email. And I'm going to take my round nose, and I'm going to make some spirals. So I'm going to grab my wire with my round nose, and I'm going to bend it, and I'm going to go outward with my spirals. So I'm going to just grab my wire and rotate it outwards. Now, here's the thing when you're making spirals is, is don't overwork your wire, okay? Your wire has a natural t body and it has a natural tendency to curve. So just let it do its thing and you'll get a nice looking spiral. I, I've recently joined a couple of wire working and, and metal smithing groups. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side on Facebook. And, and one of the main issues that, that, that newbies often have is I can't get a good spiral, I can't get a good circle, and in my experience, most of the time the problem is you're trying too hard. Just let it curl, like so. Alright, so I have this fun kind of bat wing spiral design. And I'm going to bring these spirals in a bit, and this is going to be the bottom of my pendant. Alright, so there's that. Um, so, okay, so now we're in the middle. Alright, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little, I'm going to go off the reservation. And I'm going to make this into just one big spiral that I'm going to solder in the middle of this pendant. So same thing I just did. So I'm going to start with a little curl and then I'm just going to keep rotating that around, just moving. My wire. And again, just letting it form its own spiral. Okay. And this is difficult, especially for those of us out there. And I am including myself in that who are control freaks. Um, because you, you gotta just kind of let the wire do its own thing and that's not always the easiest thing to do. Now the other thing with square wire is you want to keep it flat. Mine is definitely twisting a bit. So I'm going to take a break in just a second and go grab a bench block and a rubber mallet or a rawhide mallet and I'm going to show you how to fix that. So do you go. want me to bring you Uh, sure. That'd be awesome. Alright, so there's my spiral. This is my pendant design as it is currently unfolding. So now I've got my two, thank you so much. <laughs> so now I've got my two top bits and I think I'm gonna do them as um, double spirals. So that means I'm gonna take one end of my wire and just spiral it up like so. And I'm gonna take the other end 
and I'm going to spiral it the opposite way. I did not see the anvils, Jan, but I am sure that Heather will show me I at will. the end of I this forgot. broadcast. Yes. And you've had stuff and things. A rather busy couple of days. Yes. Alright, so there's one. And I think that one's going to go so. <laughs> Okay, so you're dating yourself. I date myself too. What did you say? Jan was talking about anvils and Aso asked if the guy worked for Acme. <laughs> we are all Looney Tunes fans here, by the way. That was not a criticism. Nope. <laughs> yeah. completely wins. I don't know if you all heard that, <laughs> but she sure was walking hope. past <laughs> the streaming area and she made roadrunner noises. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carol wins. Corvus won yesterday. Carol wins today. Who wins tomorrow? It's going to be anybody's guess. All right. So... <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to take my mallet... And I'm just going to take my pieces that are a little bit twisty, like this one. I'm going to put it on my bench block that Heather very kindly brought me. And I'm just going to pound them flat. And I'm going to do that for all of them. So there's going to be a little bit more pounding on the string. That 100% was my finger. Ouch! Oh! At least it was rawhide, right? And ouch was not what I wanted to say there. Just saying. Which Roadrunner song, Lori? Because now I have the Roadrunner song by M.I.A. in my head. Ah! That's not the same one. I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it is still a good one. Yes. Is that one of those groups you youngins like? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now I have all my yes. bits. <laughs> it, yes, it is. Alright, so now I got all my bits, and now I'm going to lay them out. Now I'm going to have to listen to MIA, MIA on the way home. Now I have the Animaniacs song in my head, which isn't the worst either. The theme song? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think these it's are going to go on the floor. And the maniacs. <laughs> and they're zany to the max. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> and I don't remember any of the other words other than that. I actually remember it better the one episode where they had everything in different languages. So they did. Nous sommes les amis maniacs. Okay, you're, 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 you're on camera, by the way. Oh, goody. Hi. <laughs> You're singing! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no, I'm just turning pink. Have, Heather's gonna murder me in the face later. <laughs> Alright, you are... You're off camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, come on. If, if torturing your staff is one of the few <laughs> pleasures... <laughs> you! Very few pleasures of owning a business. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna go with that as my pendant. Um, kind of looks like a woman with breasts. That was unintentional, but we're gonna go with it. So I've got all of my pieces laid out. All the parts where I'm, where they're touching is where I'm gonna solder. So I'm gonna take my flux and holy crap, that looks like. Seven week old peanut butter. I'll be right back. Wow. I need some water. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Seven week old peanut butter? Actually, it's worse because seven week old peanut butter isn't that bad. Seven week old yogurt? Seven year old peanut seven butter. Seven year old yeah. peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Good times. <clears throat> so, I use Paste Flux. Handy Flux is my brand of preference. And I like um, Handy Flux because you can very easily thin it out with water, which 
mine desperately needed. So what is flux while I'm stirring this? Let's talk about that. Flux is a protectant. You put it on your metal and what it does is it keeps your metal from oxidizing. So the first thing that happens when you hit um, any metal that's not pure silver or pure gold with a torch is it's going to turn black. It's going to oxidize. The problem with that oxide layer is that it's going to prevent your solder from flowing. So the flux is a protectant. It, pre it prevents the oxide from forming, allows your soldering to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my flux now that I've thinned it out on all of my joints carefully because of course I just laid this out so I don't want everything to go um, completely cattywampus, as my grandfather would say. Alright, now I'm going to grab my... Hey Robin! Uh, this was all, every all these pieces I made earlier on stream from a square 14 gauge sterling silver wire. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of easy solder. For each joint, for each place where my wire or my wires are touching, I'm going to cut a piece of easy solder. That, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of easy solder. And then I'm going to take a tweezers and I'm going to put them on each joint. My pieces of solder are going to be fairly small. They're going to be about a sixteenth of an inch. Six, four. Because it is surprising how little solder you need to close a joint. Except I have forgotten one thing, which means I'm going to need a seventh piece of solder, which is, of course, I need a way to hang this. And so I could just put a jump ring around the top of this pendant, but I would rather do just a little round loop at the top, which I can make out of my square wire. Using my round nose <laughs> pliers, I could also use a commercially made jump ring if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, animal on laminate and hardwood flooring is always amusing. If they're young and they have good joints, um, if, uh -huh. if they're old and, you know, their joints are not so good, then it's, it's less amusing, but, but yes. Baby animals on, on laminate flooring and hardwood flooring are hilarious. Always amazing. Always yeah. amazing. All right, so I have, I just made a little loop. I'm going to move that. I know, if nothing else, streaming is going to teach me to be more ambidextrous. Either that or at some point I'm going to get wise and move my camera to the left hand side of my everything. Flux. Okay, so now we are going to position those pieces of solder, which means I need a tweezers. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Yes, well, animals on hardwood floors never seem to estimate actively, or accurately, is the word I was looking for, when or they need, actively. or actively, when they need to, when they need to start decreasing velocity. Kind of like me when I'm in the car with my mother. She always thinks I should start decreasing velocity way sooner than I do. Please note, I've never actually been involved in a car wreck whilst driving my mother, despite the fact that her anxiety-induced antics are distracting to the extreme. <laughs> But I'm just placing solder here. I enjoy riding with Alice and driving. That's because you are capable of giving up control, unlike some other people who are frequent guests in my car. Fair. Alright, so. 
everything is placed. All right, all my solder is placed, so I'm about to light my torch and start to flow my solder. So before I do that, of course, we're going to do the ahem, very quick five-point soldering safety lecture from the Beating Dreams stream. So, as a person who has taught soldering for many years, these are things which I have determined are fairly important as far as Creating a safe soldering workspace in your own home and or being safe in a group soldering workspace. So number one, try your best to keep six to eight inches of clear space around your flame at all times. That means nothing that is flammable, nothing that is meltable, like webcams, like lights that have tissues on them, okay? Do as they say, not as I do. As long as you keep six to eight inches of clear space around your flame, your chances of accidentally setting something on fire are significantly reduced, which is good, okay? We want reduced chances of setting things on fire. Number two, once you've had a flame going in your workspace from that point forward, always assume everything in your workspace is hot enough to burn you because it probably is. Tweezers are your friend for picking up metal that may be hot. Number three, ventilation is important if you find that you are coughing, hacking, wheezing, or feeling otherwise uncomfortable in the lung area. Um, after you've been soldering, you probably need to re-examine your ventilation situation. Number four, if you're not actively soldering with your torch, turn it off. Especially these butane guys, really easy to ignite, really easy to extinguish. There's absolutely no reason at all that you should leave them burning when you're not actively soldering with them. And number five, make sure you know where your fire extinguisher is at all times. And if you are in a home workspace that you have created yourself, you really should make sure you have a fire extinguisher within arm's reach. Of course, if you're in a community workspace, make sure you comply with all posted regulations and all verbally conveyed regulations from whoever's running the workspace. I promise they're not just trying to be a pain in the ass. They really are trying to keep you and everyone else in your workspace safe. So now that we've had that, we're going to go ahead and light our torch and solder these together. So lit my torch and I'm going to go ahead and heat the whole thing. Now my torch is in my left hand got my tweezers in my right hand just in case any of my solder decides to jump off. Um, in order to make this soldering work, I gotta get the whole thing up to temperature, which means I have to heat every part of it. Okay, this is because metal conducts heat, and if any part of my piece is underheated, it's going to be pulling heat away from the rest of my piece. It's going to make it difficult to get my solder to flow. Now, once my... Yeah, once my um, flux is turned clear, I know that it's about time for my solder to start flowing. So then I'm going to start concentrating on my joints one at a time. Okay, also, solder flows towards heat, so make sure that, and solder will not flow across the gap. So two things, you need to make sure you've got contact, and you need to make sure that you're putting the heat where you need it to be in order for your solder to flow. So heat definitely is not a problem I'm having right here. Contact is, so I've got joints here, 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 there, this one's sketchy and that one hasn't gone at all, so let's go ahead and, so again, the whole solder flows towards heat thing just kind of, you know, brings it to the fore of like, you need to make sure that you're putting your heat where you want your solder to flow, but also you need to make sure there's contact since solder also will not flow across the gap. You need to make sure the pieces you're trying to solder together are touching each other. Which I think they are in all spots. Alright, let's see how we did. Not actively soldering anymore, so turning off the torch. Putting my glasses back on so that I can see the screen. Alright, and alright, I got everything except for that one. You can see very clearly that one joint. Okay, let go of my tweezers, please. That one joint right there, not soldered. So before I put this in the pickle, I'm just going to try and fix that. I now don't have my glasses on, so basically y'all can say whatever you want about me in the chat, and I'm not going to be able to see it until I'm done with this. Bear in mind that I do bear a grudge, though, so anything that you say to which I'm not able to respond, I will get you back for on future streams. I'm not saying a word. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about them. I just want it to be really clear. There. That it's <laughs> 
Heather doesn't want to get fired for like the 17th time in 48 hours. I've been fired so many times in the last 48 hours. It's, it's true. true. All right, everything is soldered together. It looks like so we're going to pop this in the pickle. And while it's pickling, we're going to talk about what pickle is and <laughs> what it does. <laughs> you, you cricket, whatever. Yeah, we believe you. Y'all are not innocent, not a single one of you out there. I don't care if you're lurking or anything. If you're on the Beating Dreams stream, you are culpable. <laughs> yeah. So, pickle is a weak acid... Okay, this is, like, this is the thing about now the whole, like, glasses on, glasses off thing is it's, like, it messes with the, like, what is this? What's this thing that's going on? It messes with the hairs. <sighs> Your hairs always look cute. See? <sighs> getting old, y'all. It's a thing. You're getting so old you can't see that your hair is cute. I'm getting so old that I can't see anything <laughs> close to me with my glasses on. Uh, but anyway... <clears throat> Let's talk about pickles, shall we? Yes. Okay, pickles, a weak acid solution. It's going to clean all of the crud and gross stuff off of our soldered piece so that we can polish it and make it pretty to wear. Now, let's talk about polishing while that's pickling as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab some um, triple zero steel wool or quadruple zero, whatever I happen to have handy. And I'm going to buff that piece by hand. Now, if you have access to a tumbler, you can 100% throw the piece that you don't eat the beads or the pickle or the flux all of these things are, are toxic beads aren't technically toxic most of them but they're still not going to do good things for your digestion mm, no bueno mm -mm. no eat the beads or anything <laughs> else honestly just don't eat the crafting unless you're making cupcakes or cookies like just don't eat the crafting just and if you're going to lick the science you want to consult the chart first. Exactly, because sure some science you can lick and some science you really should not lick. So, I'm going to buff this by hand with some triple um, zero steel wool. If you have access to a tumbler at this point, once I pull it out of the pickle, I absolutely could throw my piece into the tumbler, let it tumble for a day or two, and it would get nice and shiny without me having to actually you know, put any effort forward towards making that happen. Of course, that is time. So that's not, you know, that's what we don't have on the stream. So that's why I'm going to buff it by hand. Um, now, if you are doing fabrication in general, you want to make sure that you got all of your fabrication steps, including polishing, done before you add your stones. Because um, most stones can't hold up to tumbling, they can't hold up to buffing, they can't hold up to any of that. So. That was an almost yawn. Um, we believe you. So I'm going to go ahead and buff this before I add my stone, is the point here. So we're going to grab this out of my pickle, dry it off. Now, how do you know when it is pickled? And that is when it is clean, meaning when all of the black crud is gone from your piece. Black crud, red crud, green crud, blue crud. Basically, you want your piece to be a pretty clean, matte, finish white and that finish is called pickle white and that basically means that um, all all of the oxides are gone from the surface of your piece and now you have just a layer of fine silver on the surface of your piece that you have to burnish down in order to make it shiny. This is where steel wool comes in so we're gonna um, just buff that with the steel wool. Anyone who's conversant with steel wool knows that it's messy so make sure that you are on a surface that can accommodate that. Yes, I'm going to whack my camera many times while I do this. So what your steel wool is going to give you is it's going to give you a good kind of satiny silver finish. If you want like a shiny, shiny, sorry for all of the camera bashing. Um, if you want a shiny, shiny silver finish, you're going to need to either use a tumbler or use a rotary tool um, with a buffing wheel. But your steel wool... If you don't have access to any of those uh, tools, it's going to give you a really pretty kind of satiny silver finish. Now, I feel like I want to kind of pound this whole thing down a little bit just because there's a little bit of twisting going on. 
I'm going to grab my bench block again and my rawhide mallet. I'm just going to put that on there and once again with trying not to bash my fingers, I'm just going to pound this all down. Indeed. And last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and add my stone, which is going to go on with a top drilled wire wrap. So that's my pendant. So again, the 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 form here is there are infinite possibilities. Okay, this is just what I randomly decided to do tonight. Literally, like off the cuff, I hadn't even planned the sizes of my wires. So you can legitimately do anything that you want. Some of the cool things that I've done with this technique um, in the past are um, accessing old like wire filigree patterns and even like wrought iron patterns from fences and things uh, because there's some beautiful artwork um, that has been done and is still being done with wrought iron that very easily transfers to this medium. Also when you're using square wire you can 100% twist these wires to add a little bit of texture and that's something that you see a lot in the blacksmithing world is is the twist or partial twist of the wires so there are a, a massive there's a massive amount of potential regarding that as well uh, but now we're just going to go ahead and add our little ball sparkle and angle on there and then we're going to be done for the night so i'm going to take my 26 gauge wire and i'm going to cut myself off a few inches of it and by a few, I mean six. I realize that's not a few. That's several. I'm going with it anyway. Do it. You're in charge. I... Wait, what? Who you're, put me in charge? You're the boss. But, wait, when did I... You no put firing me. No one you saying should put me in charge. Why am I in charge? You put you in charge. So that explains everything, right? Well, actually, yes. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> move, moving on to a top drilled wire wrap. <sighs> I fired again. No, you're not fired. I, can I fire myself? Is that a thing? No. Shit. Why not? Well, because um, cause I couldn't. I don't think it's fair that as the boss I can't fire myself. Well, I can't leave, so... Well, yeah, because when I fire myself and, and I leave, you have to run everything. No, that's not a thing. <laughs> that is not in the contract which I signed. Okay. I mean, that's a really old contract. It's really old. Well, that was before I was running everything. You didn't know how awesome I was the that's, day you That's hired true. Me. I did not know how awesome Heather was the day I hired her, and I've spent every single day from that point until now, discovering <laughs> how incredibly awesome she is and continues to be. Wow, it's pretty thick in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, boss's day is over, so now I have to butter up to you. All right, so this is my spinel. It is October. <laughs> this is my spinel teardrop. Um, Oh my gosh, so so we, we didn't get the um, spoon and shaker October box. We got the November box, which is um, apple themed, which is going to be awesome. But their their October box was called Mezcaloween. Oh! Which, I mean, I love a good, love a good wordplay. Yes. I also love a good mezcal. Right? So there's that. But we're getting the apple box, because November. That is also great. All right, continuing on, we have, we're going to finish this tutorial, dang it. I'm not going to degenerate into um, just talking. That's for Saturday night. All right, so <laughs> I've got my wire through my teardrop, and I've got a short piece on one side. This is about whew, an inch, inch and a half, and then I've got all the rest of my wire on the other side. I'm going to bend my wires against the holes of my teardrop to make a triangle and I really want to press those down so I get a nice crisp triangle. I want the point of my uh, triangle to be directly above the point of my teardrop. And I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. Oh, 
ha uh, Robin saying that I have to keep myself in place as a firewall between you and mom. Heather, I'm sure, appreciates that, Robin. I do, Robin. Thank you. All right, so... Chain Suddenly I'm players. finding another coupon for Robin. Cha right? <laughs> uh, ah, I see. Okay, so, so apparently... Stream, buttering up the Heather is the way to make sure you get additional discounts on your live sale merchandise. And just saying, Heather also accepts gifts of chocolate and alcohol, mm -hmm. um, probably bath products, um, um, eyebrows, eyebrow products. Or uh, okay, hold on. Do you want eyebrow products, or are you actually wanting people to send you? No, their just eyebrows because that's weird. No, they can keep their own eyebrows. All right, eyebrow them. products. Um, baked goods. Since mine are clear. And she's not gluten free, so she's easier. So yeah, baked goods. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's really easy to bribe you, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> I mean, it is so easy to bribe. So me. so yeah, if anyone <laughs> wants to butter up the Heather, she is she is fully butterable. Just don't send meat, mushrooms, or eggs randomly, and. If you send meat or eggs, I will take them. Mushrooms are just going to get... They're verboten for both of us. Yeah, they're they're going to get yeeted. <laughs> That's... Which yeet is, the shrooms! Which is different than eat the shrooms. Yes. Yes, you know, we're, we would yeet the shrooms. But anything else, pretty much, you know, between the two of us. Also, let me point out that cultivating my goodwill inspires me to encourage the Heather to... Mm -hmm. It's true. You know, anyway. So even though I am easier to bribe, that doesn't mean you shouldn't aim your bribes that way. Well, you you can just aim your bribes at the Beating Dream stream, and now I'm going to stop being completely shameless, and we're going to finish this project. <laughs> so, all right, I bent my wire up. So what I did when I bent my wire up with my chain nose pliers is I basically just centered it over the central axis of my bead, and I'm going to wrap my short wire around my long wire. One and a half to two times. Like so, we want nice tight wraps. Bribes for all. All right, Robin said it. Does that <laughs> does that mean you're bringing bribes for all? Cheese, that's another good one. Cheese, Cheese yes. yeah. Cheese. Uh, Heather, Heather would do a lot of things for cheese. Oh, I sure would. I would do a lot of things for cheese that doesn't have mold in it. Allison can't have cheese with mold in it. I can't. I cannot have moldy cheese, which is very sad. Because I love moldy cheese, but my sinuses hate moldy cheese. They but do. I like they other cheeses very, very much. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we're we're a pretty wow, we're a um super sexy stream where we're like we can be bribed with with cheese. <laughs> with cheese. <laughs> oh goodness. I don't I, I'm feeling I, to see the problem. I here. feel like there are, yeah, I feel like there are a lot of women on Twitch who are who are doing this better than we are. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure one of the one of the streams that popped up on the homepage when I was going to change the um, change the stream name a couple of days ago uh, was was a woman licking a microphone. Oh. And I bet you $25 that she had at least 10 times the viewers that we have. At least. I'm pretty sure it's probably more like 100 times the viewers that fair, we have. To be fair, my microphone is somewhat awkwardly shaped for licking. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that she wasn't working at, like, I'm not saying there wasn't skill involved there. <laughs> like, I want to, I want 7,000 viewers for you know, making jewelry and <coughs> she day. probably had 7,000 viewers for licking a microphone. We're anyway, on our way to um, world domination. Don't worry. No licking of anything on stream. So says ASO. I mean, <laughs> cocktails. Maybe cocktails. Yes. Especially for doing shots. Yes. But no. No, I, I promise I will not lick my microphone on stream. Also, to be fair, my microphone's not particularly phallic, so I feel like that's not gonna... That's a totally different Yeah, that's audience. not gonna get that audience. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and continue with this project. So, I wrapped around with one and a half times, and I'm gonna trim, and pointy stabby end, which I'm not gonna lick, I'm gonna press that down. Now we're gonna do a basic wire wrap loop. Now where this is gonna attach, is going to be right here. That means I need a slightly bigger loop than I would typically do. So I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to go right down close to the base. But of course, 
when you're going down close to the base, you got to make sure you keep it on the round part and not on the square part. So, I'm going to go away from me over my round nose pliers. That makes a corner. And loosen my pliers, rotate them up onto that corner, grab again. Pull that wire back up over the top towards you and down. Now you can see what I'm starting to do is I'm making a loop around my pliers. I can't finish my loop though because my pliers are in the way. Loosen, rotate them out of the way, grab again. So now you should be able to see that first corner that you bent. Push a wire underneath your pliers and away from you. And now you've created what we call on the Beating Dream Stream our lady with a scarf. This lady has kind of a big old head because of what I said before. Because she needs to go around there. So now I'm going to take my long wire and I'm just going to thread it through my pendant and just rotate this until what the no 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 there all right until that loop is around where i want it to be in my pendant that that moment of almost cursing was because it had slipped in there but i managed to rescue it now i'm going to take my chain nose pliers hold across that loop like so and then i'm going to wrap down until i meet that that wrap that's already there so make sure you hold nice and firmly and then you're just going to make your wraps one immediately beneath the other all the way down until you reach what's already there once you've met what's already there so I have this whole string of wraps now we're going to trim and then we're going to press that end down If you do this right, you should have a relatively seamless wire ending there. And then, if you've done what I've done, which is like, oh crap, the side of my teardrop is showing instead of the front, this is very easy to fix. Just hold your loop and give your pendant a quarter of a turn, and there you go. And that, peoples of the Beating Dream Stream, is in fact our wire filigree pendant. Again, this is one of those techniques that it's... Okay, now I just want to like line my nose up. But anyway, this is one of those techniques that is so versatile that <clears throat> me showing it to you is almost an oversimplification simplification of literally all the techniques that you can do with this. But seriously, make wire shapes, solder them together, add beads if you want, and wham bam, thank you ma'am, you have a really cool piece. So thank you all so much for hang out with us on the beating dream stream this thursday evening we will be back on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beating dream on saturday with this project this is going to be our everything necklace um chain of tears necklace i actually think is what i called it um so tomorrow night you will not find us on facebook you will not find us on twitch you'll find us on zoom with our crafty cocktail hour i'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of your awesome faces tomorrow night on zoom again if you need that info check your email if you're a regular zoomer if you're not a regular zoomer email us beating dream styles at gmail.com we'll make sure you get that information in time for the zoom tomorrow so I am Allison, that voice on the other side of my screen is Heather, and we are from Beating Dreams in Dallas, Texas. We'll see y'all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream on Saturday for that chain of tears necklace, and of course we will see hopefully each and every one of you on Zoom tomorrow night for some crafty cocktail hour fun. So everyone have a great evening, and have a great day tomorrow, and we'll see you all tomorrow night.